So yesterday uh, we had a discussion regarding uh, the introduction of ERP, how ERP works, and uh, what is the like at the high level how ERP works, and what all modules we have, what all things we have in the market, different vendors, and all. So today uh, we are going to start with the subject uh, where we are starting with the application object library. In application object library, uh, as uh, you are also aware, like this is a fundamental of if you are going with uh, any of the module in Oracle ERP. So this is kind of fundamental to understand first. Uh, whether you are a technical person, whether you are a functional person, any any person should have a understanding of these uh, these basic concept of AOL. So before going uh, to the AOL part, uh, I'm just uh, briefing about what all version we have uh, till now in Oracle ERP. So we have a 10.6, that is a very older version, then we have a 10.7, then uh, we have a release 11 comes, and release 11 stay uh, for long in the market, we have a different version in release 11 which is 11.5.7, 5.9, 5.10 other version also there we just mentioned few then uh, then the latest in EBS we have R12 in R12 also we have a 12.1.1, 1.2, 1.3 and this is the latest version which we have in Oracle EBS which is eBusiness Switch and post that the uh, the current version that is in cloud which is oracle fusion release in that also we have a different version uh, fusion 9 we have fusion 10 we have fusion 11 we have and uh, now i think uh, oracle also release r12 in fusion also like uh, release 12 also so these are the different version and as the version change we have a certain functionality got added uh, let's say when uh, Oracle released 10.6, so they have a uh, different bugs. Uh, they have uh, like uh, business has <coughs> have a different uh, uh, requirement which is not getting fulfilled by Oracle. So they are just incorporating all those business requirement, all those bug fixes. Uh, so those are keep on adding. So they are what they are doing is that is their work uh, pattern. What they are doing is they are just releasing a patch let's say uh, when they are working in 11i so 11i let's say you are working in 11.5.9 so if you face any problem in 11.5.9 so what they are not directly going with a new version of that let's say uh, lots of lots of bugs are there so what they are doing is their uh, working culture is they are giving a patch bug fix for for a particular uh, thing so for every situation or every issue they are giving a particular patch which you can apply the patch is also kind of that can be a one of uh, one of patch one of patches uh, kind of uh, if you have a particular problem so that patch will fix only that problem it will not touch any other thing so that is one of patch kind of uh, the other patch we have is a kind of uh, uh, which we have is uh, the bigger patch which is which is uh, which is changing certain other things related to that functionality also and let me give an example let's say uh, you are facing some issue in a multi of functionality only or certain organization kind of uh, functionality in oracle so either they are giving a one of patch to fix the only that issue or it might be possible uh, that particular changes required a change in other functionality also because EBS is all related or all integrated to each other so that functionality can change uh, might can uh, might be changing the other functionality also so they are giving uh, a bigger patch which will uh, which will uh, change certain other things so this is a kind of uh, working pattern they have and once they have uh, let's say for longer uh, run they have a same version and they have lots of bug and lots of uh, patches they have so what they are doing is they are releasing a new version and incorporating all those patches in a release version a newer release so that the person who is uh, taking a new release or a new version should not apply those patches again and again they have incorporated all those in a different version so that is kind of uh, versioning and how they are maintaining the version okay 
I hope you I hope you understand uh, this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I have been using it, right? So, so I, I actually have a fair idea. So, yeah, you can continue. I, I'll stop you if I have any questions. Okay, sure, sure. Okay. So now, uh, so when we are going to the application object library, so application object library is a kind of foundation. So that is FND stand for. So when we are saying foundation table or foundation module, so uh, as we discussed, like uh, this is a foundation for all the modules. So we have FND as a, a schema for that. FND top. So top is kind of we have application tire in a. Let me give you example here. So we have an application tire where we have let's say FND is a top. So FND top we are saying we have a particular directory location for all the FND uh, tables, all the FND uh, uh, objects, whether it's a procedure, whether it's a, any any uh, kind of uh, data object. So we have a proper top for that, proper application, proper directory location for that. Let's say if we talk about uh, account payable, so we have an AP top. We are talking about GL generalizer, we have a GL top. So this is a kind of directory structure which we have in a database side. So FND top is a kind of foundation tables. FND stand for foundation. Okay. And the schema which FND is using that is Apple Sys. This is a schema. A schema is just you can you can say as a database user and a schema is a different name of user only so most of the time what we are using for all these tops we have a user called apps and which we call as a apps schema you might have heard about this but for yeah, FND, yeah. TV concepts I know actually I, I understand when you say a schema so yeah yeah, so this foundation uh, for for foundation we have Apple Sys as a schema, and for all these tops we have uh, apps schema. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the before before going to the uh, assigning or before creating a user and all, I'm just uh, briefing you about the security we have. So. When you are working in Oracle ERP, so different user have a different uh, responsibility, different roles, and the person cannot access other than the responsibility or the access given to the user. So how we are maintaining uh, a security into uh, into the Oracle application? So we have a different level of security. So we are going to discuss here uh, one is a function level security, function level security. And second is our data data level security. We have a different other level also like uh, uh, rules level security and other level security also. But uh, that is uh, we are more into the DBA side. So that we are not going to discuss. Uh, this is a, uh, like a mandatory uh, security level which we are going to discuss. And others are optional which uh, database person or DBA person can use those functionality. So when we talk about functional level security, so let me take you here. So this is our functional level security where we are saying, let's say Raj is a user and Raj have a responsibility called GL. We have AP responsibility and AR responsibility. So these are the responsibility. Okay. And then on this responsibility, every responsibility have a certain menu. Menu, uh, you can say menu is a kind of navigation provided to the particular person. And let's take a, a, let's take a simple example when we are going into the restaurant. So there also we have a menu, right? So in menu, we can say one is menu and one is sub menu. So let's take an example of our daily routine life when we are saying a menu. So menu is kind of uh, a top level thing where we can say a top level thing in a in a hotel perspective we can say okay uh, let's say for lunch what we have this is our menu and in lunch what we have like all the recipes so those are kind of sub menu okay 
yeah yeah when you submit i understand uh, so yeah okay okay so and in sub menu we have a, we have called function and in function when we are clicking on that function it is calling a form so ultimate ultimate uh, thing is we need to call a form we need to call a report what is the what is the final outcome of that so that is how we are giving a navigation to the person how it looks uh, to the to the front page when the person is opening that uh, application how it looks like if you want like a certain things to be removed from that uh, menu so that the person is not a uh, person don't have access of that particular form so we can do that by using a menu so that is one thing okay and this is this is called a function level security where we have uh, this function is there and uh, on the basis of this function we are calling form so this is function level security the other security can we can have you give a couple of, can you give a couple of examples for function under the sub menu uh, just uh, maybe in anywhere apr yeah sure so uh, do you have a uh, system access can you provide a system access to me ah uh, yeah one second i hope my password is still working just let me just do it okay one second it is not working <coughs> yeah i think it is mm. expired for this because i haven't used it for for some time i just go on this one i'm just trying other environments okay Okay, so I got into UAT. Uh, 
this here. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen now. Okay, so can I get the access of... Uh... Yeah, so how do I do that? keyboard and mouse right? yes yes yeah and uh, just caution right this is uh, UAT so uh, let's only do the views and uh, uh, no transactions okay yeah sure okay so uh, if you see here Raj uh, the, this is the page when you are logging through uh, your user ID so you can see uh -huh. uh, once you log in with a user ID and password, you see these are the responsibility which is assigned to you. Okay. Uh -huh. So these are the responsibility. When you click on a particular responsibility, these are the menus which you have, uh, subfolder uh -huh. you are seeing. And then when you click in here, these are the forms and functions. Functions here. So when you click on a particular function, let's say I'm not using this one. I'm going to the security mm -hmm. and then I'm going to the user okay and this is defined this is called a function okay, okay. so mm -hmm. this is responsibility system administrator is a responsibility then security is a menu mm -hmm. okay and this user is a sub menu and here this is a function and when you are clicking on this it will invoke a Java and uh, like a this Java runtime uh, and it will open a form. Right. So the purpose of one second. Yeah, that's all my windows, right? <laughs> You wanted to see in your window probably? Yeah, no, no, this, this page I want. Okay, so the purpose of this, uh, the menu is, if let's say you want a user and in user you want to define, you don't want a monitor in this. Yeah. So what we can do is, we can change our menu. In a menu we can hide this particular monitor for a particular person also. For, for that what we need to do is, we need to create a custom menu and in that custom menu we need to just remove or disable this particular monitor function so once you disable it and assign it to particular responsibility and that responsibility is assigned to particular user then user will not able to see this monitor as a function there so by using menu what you can do is you can alter how the how the page looks like and what are the features or what are the uh, options the person can uh, check in the in the in particular page so this is this is all about menu like uh, we have a menu there we have a sub menu there and then we have a function and by clicking on function you can call it a form these these okay. are the things okay so okay. this is uh, this is just a high level when we are uh, discussing more about uh, menu then I'm, I'm telling you how we are creating a menu and how we can uh, change a menu, how we can create a custom menu, all these things we will did, uh, uh, discuss in detail. Sure. Okay, so this is the first page where uh, the person, if you want a user to be created for you uh, to log in into the application, so this is the page. To get into this page, we have a navigation. The navigation is when you go to the system administrator, we have a security uh -huh. and we have a user 
and then define once you click on define this page will open this form will open mm -hmm. and this this uh, form we are uh, calling as a professional user interface PUI form okay mm -hmm. so if you if somebody is telling like what is the PUI form these forms are PUI form because these are some uh, forms created for professional user and this is not for end user kind of because uh, we as a IT professional we know how to work in these forms so this is called as a PUI form and the one which we are giving to the end user that is kind of self-service pages we are giving okay so in right. Oracle terms we are saying this as a PUI form so before right. discussing this user I'm just uh, I just want to tell about uh, the responsibility which is uh, which is uh, there for uh, application object library we have a system administrator as a responsibility and the second responsibility which we have is a functional administrator responsibility so okay. system administrator responsibility is uh, when we are doing uh, certain setups or certain uh, like enabling certain functionality in a PUI form and functional administrator is more into the HTML or uh, those uh, OF form also which is a framework which we are which we have uh, OF framework kind of so right. Those uh, functional administrator is more into that. Uh, we will discuss the functional admi administrator also, but uh, first we can discuss a system administrator. Okay? okay. Now, if you check this form, we have a uh, two uh, two box which is in yellow. This represent these are the uh, mandatory fields, and the others description and all these fields you can see these are a non-mandatory or you can say optional field. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now. If I if I search uh, your employee, so to search an employee, we have a command called F11. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is a query mode, enter query mode. Okay, so right. if I press F11, mm -hmm. so here you can see uh, F11. Uh, this comes into the query mode. Now I'm searching, and the percent sign is just for uh, like wild search. If you if you uh, like. don't know exact name of this so what we can do is VEL I think this is the uh, user name for yeah. you yeah and what we are doing for searching is uh, control F11 so when I'm pushing a control F11 so all so the person who, who is having a VEL in his name those will come out here okay So is there a way to cancel this request? Uh, which request? When we are control, uh, when we are doing control F11, uh, is there a way to cancel that? Yeah, we have a profile option uh, to cancel this, but that is again uh, work on a uh, particular form only. Uh, I don't think this will work in a, a control F11 and F11 because in F11 we are already in a wild search when we are giving a percent and all those. But let's say what you are doing is you are you have a one form where you are saying uh, you just put uh, assignment number or employee number of any any particular person and you click on find find button and you want all the transaction of that employee and the person have a, uh, lots of transactions so which will take time so when we are enabling that profile option and clicking on find system will give a pop up and that pop-up have a, a button called cancel so if you uh, if you think like this uh, this uh, this particular form is taking time to get all the transaction of that employee you can put a cancel there that that uh, is that is possible but uh, I don't think uh, in a control F11 yeah, this uh, that that particular profile option work you need to make a search with a control uh, with a particular uh, name only so here you can see we have uh, too many names here. I think this so is the what one. What are you doing to navigate to the next one? Uh, this is a uh, down arrow. So if you oh, have down arrow. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So if you have a multiple uh, user or multiple records in a form, so to get uh, to a next record, you can put a down arrow and up arrow can work there. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So here uh, I'm just searching. Uh, the one yeah, maybe maybe let's is. do a VLP uh, so that uh, maybe it will be only me. 
okay VELP and then percent so when I'm making VELP and uh, without any percent in front so system will check only the person having starting with a VELP and if I put a percent again in front also then uh, system will check anywhere if VELP comes together then system will uh, filter that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's me okay yeah. so Okay, so this is uh, Velpuru and uh, Velpuru Raj, and uh, your account is there. So here you can yeah. see a username is mandatory. Now password is not mandatory, right? Right. So how is it possible? So let me create one. I'm not saving the record, but I'm just uh, showing you how it works. I'm not going to save this record. So okay. this plus button works as a, if you want to create a new record. So here yeah. you can click a plus button. Or the other thing is you can go to the file and here also you can click a new okay so there are two ways to create it okay so let's say I'm saying and I'm uh, this is Nathan Mahishuri I'm creating mm -hmm. and here when I'm giving a password this is V E L C O M E okay I gave this password and just press tab when I'm pressing tab so you can see here uh, re-enter your password to verify re-enter your password to verify because when I'm pushing uh, pressing tab again this field become blank and how would I know like if I'm a first user if I'm using the application first time how would I know like why system is not allowing me to go further so these are the these are the messages uh, every form have if uh, something unexpected is going so system will tell you okay what exactly you need to perform next so mm -hmm. system is asking to re-enter the password again so what I'm doing is V E L C O M E and then press tab again okay some policy okay okay so uh, every password must contain okay so this is a kind of policy we have so welcome zero one I'm putting and then again I'm putting welcome zero one okay now the password field is non mandatory okay and this is not display also so we are not able to see what is the password and if you check in the back end also this is encrypted uh, data this is not a welcome zero one in the database also otherwise the technical person can uh, get the password very easily so those are the things okay right then we have a description. Description is basically uh, you can give uh, any description within the account, something like that, so that the person will uh, understand. And the status this is a non editable field. This will populate once you save this record, whether the person is active or whether the person is inactive. So, a status right. will become on the basis of effective dates. So, if you have a two date put here and which is a, a, a like previous date so system status is the user status is inactive because the person don't have active user right now mm -hmm. but uh, in uh, in our case we have a two date is a blank and when we putting a two date or any date in oracle application as a blank system consider an oracle standard is a 31st december 4712 as a uh, Open data record, which you can uh, which you can mark as open data record. So in the back end, if you see, you can see most of the table having a record called 31st December 4712. So that is when you are uh, checking into the application, you will not see 31st December 4712 in the application. But in back end, uh, for the uh, for the table prospectives, uh, Oracle maintain as a 31st December 4712. So we need not to confuse on that. Okay. Hey uh, Nitin, uh, so do you do you know how to reset the the front end password from back end? Because uh, maybe we can do that in dev uh, dev environment. This is UAT, right? So there we can actually uh, play around a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have we we have API for that. Like FND user package is there. So to uh, to just change the password of that, we have FND user package dot a uh, change password. So in that you need to give uh, a parameter now so that we can actually uh, because here we can't touch much but in dev we can do things actually 
Yeah, yeah that that we can do. But the thing is, uh, to create an API, those are not a ready-made kind of API which I have. Uh, no, to, okay, uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Want that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to do those things, right? Uh, uh, if these kind of things required or any any specific requirement you have, you can just uh, put a mail so that I will prepare uh, a code and then we can we can describe the code in uh, our session. Because if I write this code right now, so it will take uh, some time to. Uh, uh, write a code. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, I was actually trying to. No, I mean, we can actually play around a little bit more, more in dev actually. So, UAT will be limited, but uh, uh, dev we can. I will probably get it reset to uh, tomorrow's session. Yeah, yeah, sure. That we can do. That dev, we can do. And then we can. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. We can do that. Yeah. Okay. And that is that is more helpful for you also to understand how API works and how we can change the password and all those things. In in Oracle, uh, most yeah, of yeah. the things uh, and from backend, Oracle provides an API, which is uh, application uh, like a program interface. Uh, uh, Oracle provided, so that is getting used uh, if any updation is there. And what is the need of API in Oracle? Where as we are saying, uh, everything is integrated to each other. Okay, right now you are seeing a user screen, but this user can be used or this user uh, information can be used in other forms also right so if you directly updating fnd user table which is a table behind this particular form it will not impact other tables so directly uh, creating or directly writing a update statement on fnd user will solve the problem of this particular form but it will create a problem in other form where uh, this is the master data and uh, and uh, uh, like uh, those tables are child records and this is the master record for those so then it will be mismatched the record will not be in sync yeah. so api will take care of all the forms yeah. or all the all the things where it is getting impacted so we, we are using api for that okay so right. this pass password expiration a password expiration is kind of uh, the policy we can say in a company if we want password never to be expired so we can put this as a none by default it is none only but if you want how many days we want this password to be expired so we can click on days it is a little bit slow I think Yeah, it will be a little slow. <laughs> yes. So when we click on days, so days for uh, uh, this button will open or this uh, page will open. Then here you can put a 30 days or 90 days or whatever the policy you have. Okay. If you don't want this to be on date base days basis, so we have another option called access. So let's say if I'm putting access here, so how many access like let's say you have a three attempt so how many attempts system will allow to re-enter the password but if you want there to be like a, after three attempt password needs to be reset or you need to contact your system administrator then you can put a number of accesses here okay so this is a password expiration policy uh, you can maintain in your uh, in current organization DBA mostly this part DBA will do this is not part of technical consultant and this is not part of uh, functional consultant also because this is something uh, related to security or giving access so DBA take care of that but uh, it is better to have understanding of uh, anything this this kind of thing so here uh, we have a user what is, and uh, now I'm going to discuss uh, regarding the person uh, so can you tell me what is the difference between user and a, and a employee? What is user and what is employee? Uh, user and an employee, is it? Okay, employee, uh, a given employee can, might probably have multiple usernames. I mean, is that, is that a possibility? Uh, yeah, in uh, in application there is a possibility like uh, application will allow, but uh, I just want to understand uh, what is the purpose behind that uh, having a multiple user. Uh, yeah, I mean based on the based on the role, 
uh, I might probably have a different user ID, right? Okay. No, uh, no. I think uh, if you have a multiple role also, so ultimately you are going to work, right? So we can give all oh, those okay. roles in particular, uh -huh. yeah, particular user only, and then uh, you can switch your responsibility and do your task uh, right. as per, as per your roles. The main purpose of uh, the main difference between user and employee is, let's say uh, you are a, you are an employee of GES, right? And if mm -hmm. I'm going there and I work a, in a GES as a contractor, not as an employee, but to work in application, I need a user, right? So in mm -hmm. that case, I'm a user of the company. I'm a user in the application, but I'm not an employee of the company, right? Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Contractor, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, so it means if you have, if you are an employee, so you should have a user in the application because if you are an employee, you need to fill your self-service things and all those things most of the time. It might be possibility like your company don't want to give any user to you or any access to the application. They are saying like uh, we will take care of your all HR details and all these things. But most of the company, uh, if you have, if you are an employee of the company, they will give a user account to uh, like in the application. So that. Yeah, Nitin, can't hear you. But the user can can be an employee or cannot be an employee of the company. Right. So user is just to enter into the application and employee is when you are getting a salary from uh, that particular, like as an employee, uh, you are getting a salary from that. Right. Uh -huh. so this is a basic difference. Okay. So now when I'm putting a person here, so let's say if I'm I'm searching here and the search is well I think a name would be start with the last name right well and Raj so now when I'm searching well Puru Raj it means what I'm doing is I'm saying this username is linked with this particular employee so if any transaction happening from this particular user it will if let's say I'm logging into the NM user and I'm checking a payslip of a particular employee. So if I'm trying to check a payslip from uh, self-service, I will get a payslip from for a Velpuru Rashtrika because this employee is linked with this, this particular user. And this pop-up comes, it is saying the employee is already assigned to the VELPUR because you are, uh, your user is also assigned with this particular employee. So system is giving a kind of pop-up so in this case we have a two user where you are saying uh, as you were saying like we can have a multiple user in this case because this is not a real-time scenario this is just I'm doing for testing purpose person can have only one one account or one user but system is giving a pop-up or kind of caution like this particular user already linked with this particular employee so employee assigned uh, to more than one user may cause error in application so just give a warning sign this is not an error if you click on ok and save it system will allow but in in uh, system is giving a warning you might face some challenges while working in application so those kind of things is there you understand okay. yeah, yeah okay so this is this is just kind of caution if you if you click on ok you you can see a warning sign if it is error system will not allow to go further but in this case system will allow you if you click on ok I'm not clicking on ok I'm putting a cancel here. right okay now I'm uh, removing this from here okay now if you want this to be uh, this user to be customer we can put here as a customer also you want this user to be as a customer you want this user as a supplier you can attach supplier name here you can put an email address for this user what is the email address on fax detail you can put here okay these are these are these are the details you can put or you can link with this particular user now yeah. now uh, if I go and save it the system will uh, save this record but because uh, in a user if we are saving the record we cannot delete the user record and can you can you tell me what why we are we system not allowed to delete a user account from the system 
Any 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 guesses? Uh, why? Because I think that will be the. Uh, so anything and everything will be uh, tied with the user, right? So I think I understand that there are. Uh, it's called the who columns, right? They created by created uh, uh, date last updated by last updated date. So. So that's always with the user is what I understand. So maybe for doing the differential integrity, we'll never we'll probably activate, deactivate only, and then never delete. Okay, uh, that is also a good point, but uh, that is not the reason because uh, the thing is, uh, yeah. if you are putting a two, uh, if you are deleting the record, uh, the problem is uh, this is a problem in uh, auditing. So let's say. You are you are taking uh, the correct point, but the thing is, it will it will create a problem in auditing. Let's say in the future, uh, you have a user ID. You are deleting a particular record, and something happened by this user, something done by that user, and uh, the name is there. But when you are checking on when uh, auditing uh, in auditing, when somebody is checking, uh, what is the username for that? Or uh, where is the user? Whether the person have a uh, proper uh, access to do this task or not? And then you are not finding a user, so that is a problem in auditing. So what system do is system restrict a deletion of that particular user so that the person will uh, the, it will not create a problem in auditing. So that is a uh, that is the purpose. And your point is also valid because if you are deleting this, then uh, Username will not reflect in in a particular transaction, and which will again uh, the transaction without a who column. So that is that is not uh, going to happen in application. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this case, so what is the what is the possibility or what is the uh, way to uh, stop a particular user? Let's say person resigned from the company, and now I don't want that user to be work. In the application, so how we are going to do this if you are not able to delete it? Yeah, end dating, right? The yeah. Effect. So what we can do is we can end date this particular record, okay? Mm. And what is the purpose of uh, from date? When we are creating a username, so what is the purpose of from date? There, we are creating a user to uh, uh, for for that employee to work in the application. So why we are giving an effective date? So I mean, that is, that means that the user ex exists only from this date onwards, going forward, and then not before. I mean, is that is the, if uh, if that is the, if that is the thing. So the day when we are creating a user account, uh, that yeah. uh, that record is there with the creation date, right? So which is again a who column. So whenever we are okay. saving a record, so who column right. always populate. So why we are giving a special. Uh, from date here in effective date. Oh yeah, if we want to have a future. Yes, probably. yes, that's correct. That's correct. If you want, like we hired employee today, and I want uh, from next week the person should have access of application. So what we can do is at the time of uh, creating a user, we can put a future date. So uh, system, uh, the person will uh, have access from future date only, not today's date. So that is a well, well point. You. Okay, so uh, this is from date and true date, and again, true date also can be used as a future. If you want this contractor person is only available for two months, so what we can do is at the time of creating a user account, we can put uh, a true date also. Let's say 21st of April 2017. So person, uh, if we forget, like person uh, leave the company and we forget to end date the particular account. So it's better to put a future date so that the once the person go out, then uh, automatically the account will be disabled. And if they want like a account to be extended, they just uh, change the two date uh, in the user account. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I'm I'm telling you certain shortcuts uh, to work in the application. As I told you, F11 and Control F11 that can be. Mm -hmm. That can be from here also. Like you can go to edit, mm -hmm. and here, this one shortcut is clear. If you press clear here, so record will be clear form. 
Yeah. You are changing uh, pending discard. Okay, so the record is cleared now. So the shortcut for this is one thing is you can go to the edit and then clear, and the shortcut is F6. So if you press F6, uh, system will clear all these things. And to yeah. get all the shortcuts, you can go to help, and then you can check here. This is keyboard help. Uh -huh. Okay, so these are the these are the shortcuts we have. So uh, the major shortcut you can use, which is uh, getting used uh, most of the time, as I'm using F6, Control S for uh, saving the things if you want to save certain things. Okay, and to delete uh, uh, delete a particular record, Control App, Control Up uh, you can press. Okay. If you want, if you want a duplicate field to be created, let's say you want to put uh, so many lines, and in every line, certain thing or certain field is uh, like a duplicate or the same which we are putting above. So what we can do is right. we can just click on that particular field and press Shift F5. So by clicking on Shift F5, system will populate the the same thing which we put uh, for the first record. Mm -hmm. So these shortcuts, uh, these shortcuts, uh, uh, help helpful when we are working in application. You need not to use a mouse every time. So these are the things which you can use. Okay. okay. You can use uh, as per as per your convenience or whatever things you are using uh, most of the time. So you can choose these sh shortcuts from here. Okay? okay. So now I'm again clicking on uh, checking your account. Yeah, yeah, that's different. So VLP probably. Okay. So here yeah, you can see you can see I didn't type again. What I did is I double press F11. So let's say again check. If you oh. if you double press F11, okay, mm -hmm. it will it will type whatever you type uh, the last time. Oh, so. Okay. Double press F11 will automatically type those things which you typed uh, last time. But the the condition is you should not be out from that particular form. If you close this form and again uh, click on that form, system will not uh, give that particular uh, uh, okay. function. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here you can see your account. You can see days, which is a 45 days, and now. You can see status is active because once you save the record and the two date is not there, so system is uh, saying okay the record is active. And this person is assigned like uh, employee is assigned to you, and uh, this is the email address which is uh, which is updated, and these are the responsibility. So let's say when I'm saying uh, this particular user, I need to attach these responsibility. So again, as I, I cannot delete the user. The same way I cannot delete the assigned responsibility to any user mm. for the same purpose uh, for the auditing purpose. So what we are doing is, if someday we want this responsibility be, to be uh, uh, revoked, so what we do is we just put a uh, end date to that, so that right. the person uh, person will get okay. Uh, now this responsibility is not there with this employee. Okay. Right. So these are the these are the things which we have in a responsibility. Okay. Right. So now, while while creating a responsibility, we have a certain prerequisite for that. So as I as I was telling you about the prerequisite, which is a security, mm -hmm. which is a security which we discussed. So security is we need to create a menu. I think uh, now I'm going with uh, this uh, document also. Okay, so user we discussed, end user responsibility, menu, submenu, function forms we uh, discussed at the high level. Okay, okay. Now, application object library. This is a full form of AOL. Is an interface used for registering custom object like forms report in Oracle application. So you might have heard about a D2K application. Have you heard about D2K? Yeah, yeah, DTK forms, yeah. 
yeah so d2k forms are uh, that is nothing to do with the uh, oracle so once if you want d2k form to be registered in oracle application so we need to go with the we need to have understanding of aol where we are this is a linking between d2k and oracle apps okay right here uh, for f11 control f11 these are the shortcut keys but if you want uh, what are the what are the other things uh, let me show you. Is it already open? Uh. I think it's already open, no? No, I think this is the form uh, we need to just... This is the menu, uh, otherwise form will here only. Right, right. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. Okay. So now uh, you can see here, click on control uh, view and query by example, and you can see enter. So this enter will work the same as we are doing with the F11. So if you click on enter, here you can, uh, it is going into the query mode. Okay. Now I am doing a VELP percent, and then again clicking on view and then query by example and then run and you were asking you were asking uh, can we do a cancel uh, again uh, this is the option where we want uh, we can do a cancel but uh, I just need to check whether this can be done at the run time or not because before running the query there is no uh, need of cancel you can just uh, remove from here the only point is when we are in a running mode whether this option is coming or not so what we are doing is I think we can go with the percent VELP and percent and then it will take some time so we have a time to check whether this option is working or not so I am doing a control F11 okay and going on view oh it comes before that okay so this this you can try like uh, from uh, in application also when uh, uh, record are too too much and it takes time so just check uh, going to the view and then cancel whether this will work or not if system allowed sure. so it's it's good uh, otherwise uh, we don't have a functionality okay so VLP okay. percent and when uh, to do the control F11 you can go to the view and go to the query by example and then you can click on run mm -hmm. so here when we click on run this is the same thing which we are doing with the control F11 right okay so this is the same thing now we have another thing here you can see record let's say uh, you have uh, so many records here if I'm clicking here in a responsibility mm -hmm. the responsibility which is assigned to the person yeah and now I'm going I, I just want to check how many responsibility person have so I'm going to the record and clicking on last so it will it will go to the last record mm -hmm. and below here you can see how many records are there okay mm -hmm. okay so this is this is another thing uh, you don't need to uh, click uh, down arrow again and again and check how many or no need to count that so we have a record and then we can last and now we are on last thing and last record so we can click on first so you can directly go to the first record so, so is there a shortcut for that too first and last I think uh, I'm not using that but the shortcut can be checked here yeah, yeah, okay, uh, that's... and the, the main shortcut is uh, for, for these things you can use a page up and page down so I'm put, uh, putting a page down here so you can see whatever things are displaying here it will go up and then uh, Internet Explorer till Internet Explorer we have uh, displayed now GES Expo custom response we uh, we are checking so if you because we have only six records so only one record is coming by right. page up and page down but right. if we have multiple records let's say 10 records or 20 records so uh, by doing a page up or page down it will just remove all those records which are right now displaying and showing the other records so page yeah. up and page down can be uh, can be used okay. 
okay uh, let me check another thing here query by example find all find so here if you click on find mm -hmm. responsibility you can you can uh, search for any particular responsibility here also uh, two things are there if you want by clicking on responsibility every form have a different section you can see this is one section the password expiration you can see a small box kind of here effective mm -hmm. date is again a box here and the resp direct responsibility is again a box here you can see a, a separate marking for that so mm -hmm. if you click on direct responsibility here and again click on F11 only this particular section of the form will go into the query mode not the complete form right right so here if I want to check uh, do we have a system administrator system person system controller. person system person and control F11 it will only display a system administrator mm. okay and uh, if I wa if I don't want a particular search on the basis of particular uh, uh, particular is we need not to put F give a total total search it will display all the records without any filtration so what did you do to get back to okay. so office? yeah so uh, to get back on this uh, we just click on control F11 if you want to do a particular search based on filter so I'm clicking on F11 to go into the query mode now I can give my filter let's say system this is the filtration I'm giving and then pressing on control F11 so system okay. will filter only only whatever the filtration I gave but if right. I, I don't want a particular filter so what I will do is there is no need of F11 so what I will do is I just click control F11 so it will give a complete record it will not go with a particular filter because we know we are not using filter now. Oh, you did one more control F11 and it has come back with all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, control F11 directly. Need, no need to go with the F11 because F11 is only for if you want a certain filter or certain a certain uh, mm -hmm. things to be searched. So okay. if I want to search, uh, so you can click on view and you can click on find. This is also a one one more thing. Where you can get all these responsibility in a in a drop down list, and here you can either you can search if it is a long list, or either you can directly click here and then click on OK. Okay. So this this is this is another thing. If you don't want to use a control F11 or this, you can go to View and you can go to Find and then click on click on this particular form if it is a long list and uh, here we have a scroll here so then we need to go with the find and if it is a short list you can just click on system administrator and then then you will get okay this is the record and this is not end dated whatever things we have <coughs> okay now uh, we have one one thing here is application so you remember we have an application uh, for uh, like we discussed about application right which is a FND yeah. drop and we have a GL drop so this is the application we are we have in the system I just said okay so system administrator administration this is an application for a system administrator responsibility and this is provided by Oracle so this is not a custom one mm -hmm. if we want to create a custom responsibility for that we have a different process which we are going to discuss uh, further like in a, another chapter so this is a seeded responsibility we have so let's say if I want to check a custom responsibility or a custom thing so most of the company are using a nomenclature a name, uh, convention for that so for that uh, custom thing we are using most of the time XX as a custom object so if you mm -hmm. press XX and then percent so you will find a custom thing and this is again because responsibility is visible to the user right so most of the company also access is kind of XX we are using 
for a kind of database object which is not visible to the user. User right. don't need uh, what is what is the code behind that or what is the name of that. That is just for a technical person. But to right. display a, a responsibility to the user, that should be in a, a proper uh, naming convention for that. So most of yeah, the companies, let's say, yes, yeah, so, yes. Yeah. So most of the companies using with the initial of uh, that company. So here you can see GES responsibility. So you can see uh, these are the custom responsibility which we are using. And these responsibility have an application which is a seeded application. A payables is there, receivables is there, and GES. Uh, this is the custom responsibility, custom application. You can see GES Expo custom application. Mm -hmm. So this responsibility is getting used with a custom application. So we have created a custom application to use this particular uh, responsibility. So now my question is. Uh, when we have all the responsibility and all the application in the responsibility, I understand like responsibility you want, you want to give a particular access to the user so you are creating a new responsibility for that. But what is the purpose to create a new application when we already have Oracle given application? And this application which uh, G is created, this is also a copy of a particular application only. Uh, like the uh, expo custom uh, any any application and they just uh, created a copy of that so what is the purpose to create a custom application for for having our own custom business functions custom forms custom functions procedures packages that I mean, we can that we mm -hmm. yeah yeah that is a good point but that we can uh, save into the application also like a seeded application also let's say I'm doing something in a payable and I'm creating a payable a custom report so that custom report I can put in a payable application also uh, it will work fine so but what is the basic reason or exactly why we are because most of the company I've seen they are using a payable as an application and all the custom objects they are putting in a payable application only but why we are saying the best practice is to create a custom application and use all the custom object in that application only. There is a uh, like purpose for that. Uh, whenever we apply uh, patches, for example, from Oracle, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, let's say it's a wild guess. Okay, so then then I am assuming that probably uh, the custom applications will not be touched, and then the, all those will stay intact and. Uh, uh, the rest of the modules will probably kind of get upgraded to or uh, with the patch basically. Yeah, that's correct. Whenever we have any patches or any upgradation happen from Oracle, so Oracle only touches uh, their uh, their seeded things only. So if you are changing the seeded thing, uh, let's say Oracle from 11i to R12 or 11i version got changed, and they change that particular lookup also or that particular uh, form also. So whatever the custom objects you have or custom things you have that that will got wiped out. So you don't have any backup for that. Uh, the one one thing you can do is you can take your uh, test instance or UAT instance and uh, do the backup in production. But that is not a that is not the proper solution. So the solution is we need to create a custom application to make that intact. So that uh, anything happen, anything happen from Oracle side will not impact to uh, that particular application. So that is a very good point here. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is the basic purpose. How we are not changing the seeded uh, thing, and only uh, anything custom we are uh, doing in the custom application only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And here you can see uh, GES I typed I just want to clear this particular record so what I will do is without going to view and edit and clear I can press F6 so I'm pressing F6 now so you can see GES is uh, gone now it's cleared yeah. okay so this is this is a shortcut for that and right. if I want to if I want to check again a system administrator I'm just uh, pressing F11 two, two times so here you right. can see the last filtration one yes and then control F11 will walk here okay, right. uh -huh. okay. so uh, this is uh, a user uh, 
uh, section we have we discussed today. Uh, if you if you want, uh, we can we can discuss further also if you have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe a few more minutes. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, after user, we have uh, another thing which is called a responsibility. So mm -hmm. let me let me tell you first what is how responsibility page looks like and then we will discuss what are the prerequisites for that and then before creating a responsibility we need a certain things to be created and then only responsibility will work. So here you can see responsibility name that is a mandatory for, uh, section then application is a mandatory responsibility key is a mandatory data group is a mandatory menu is a mandatory and request group is a non-mandatory or optional field okay and here we have a menu exclusion these we will discuss in later section so now uh, responsibility name application and responsibility key what is the difference or what is the purpose of responsibility name and responsibility key what is the purpose of that and can we yeah, have it's a... okay yeah go ahead yeah it, it's a short name right the responsibility name can be like a uh, uh, user defined with spaces and all that like a like a short description and then responsibility key will be a the short name uh, so we call uh, basically right on um, which can be like be uh, it's like the, it's like the primary key kind of a thing right to behind the scenes you actually uh, can use that that yes uh, yeah right. responsibility key is a shortcut that is that is okay but uh, uh, without giving uh, without having a primary key that answer is not uh, fulfilled so the last point which you raised that is a primary key also because responsibility name can be duplicate uh, we can have a uh, same name for the responsibility but the only point is the application should be different if uh, we have let's say uh, so the combination has to be unique isn't it? The com yeah, com yeah combination has to be unique and responsibility key should be unique this is a primary key so whatever you are putting here in responsibility that should be unique that cannot be this cannot be a duplicate okay right. so this is uh -huh. this is a purpose application as I'm telling you the application why we are putting application in responsibility what is the need of application here this is just to give an idea by seeing the application you will get to know okay uh, responsibility name can be let's say I'm saying GES data entry so how will you know like on which particular application this form will do the data entry this will this will work you will you will understand if I'm giving the application as a payable so you will understand okay uh, this is something related to payable only so this is kind of uh, information we are providing okay this responsibility belongs to this particular application okay right responsibility name responsibility name can be a descriptive one it should be descriptive one but it is uh, somebody any consultant or anyone uh, put the name without any a uh, proper description or we don't have a description field uh, filled here also so by checking the application name we can understand okay this is something related to payable this is something related to receivable generalizer anything here also you can see a responsibility effective date and uh, to date with the same reason we can put a responsibility uh, available from future date and can put a to date also so that is uh, one thing available form so most of the time we are using oracle application as available form you can put oracle self-service web pages if you are using this responsibility as a self-service uh, if you are using application uh, oracle application also system will not give any error system will work as it's working it will work for Oracle self-service web application also so let's say uh, self-service application which we discussed in our first lecture uh -huh. self-service application is kind of uh, we are giving a employee to do self-service kind of thing like employee self-service you want to run your payslip you want to run your form 16 you want to put your form pan number details all those things so we are giving a self-service page so that the person have certain functions there and by clicking on that function some uh, either uh, form will open either certain OA pages will open and then you can put your entry on the basis of condition or validation and just click on apply that will hit the same table which we are hitting from PUI table PUI forms 
So mm -hmm. table would be same if you are going with the forms or if you are going with the uh, self service page. Table will always be same. I've seen a person have uh, some understanding gap between uh, self service and uh, this, and they are thinking like uh, uh, self service page hit some other uh, tables and. If a record you are saving with a PAN number, so where uh, uh, whatever thing, forms or whatever way you are updating, system will update in the same location. Okay. So here, so Oracle application is for kind of when you are using PUI forms, so you are using Oracle application. And if it is specific for self-service, so you can use self-service. Mobile application I haven't used, but uh, as name suggests, this is for mobile application. If you want a certain responsibility to work in a mobile application, kind of Android phone or iPhones, so we can use, we can have that functionality also. I never use this, so I'm not aware much about this. Okay. Okay. This, this is menu. So menu is basically, as, as I told you, menu is uh, basically how your responsibility will look like. So to create a responsibility, we should have uh, created a menu, already existing menu we can use. Or if you want a custom menu to create, so we need to create a custom menu and then attach that menu here in the, in the responsibility. This is a function security. When we are saying menu, this is a function security which we discussed here. In a menu, we have a sub menu, we have function, and we have form. So this is kind of hierarchy. So this is this is kind of hierarchy uh, which uh, person can uh, like uh, in a function security uh, system can use. And the other security is data group security. Data group security uh, is so, so Nathan, question. So, uh, responsibility to menu, it's uh, uh, it's many to one, is it? So, so a given uh, responsibility can be, uh, or or is it a, or or it's it's like from menu to responsibility is many to one. So, one given menu can be associated with multiple responsibilities. Uh, yes, but the other way around, it's only one to one. So for a given responsibility, there can be only one menu, but that same menu can be assigned to other responsibilities as well. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Because okay. responsibility name, we have only one field where we can put only one menu. So if you want this menu to be removed uh, going further or can be used uh, uh, another menu, you can do that. You can alter the menu in a responsibility anytime. Because if you are saving this record, this field is uh, still open so you can change the menu so that is possibility but uh, the menu can be used in multiple responsibility you are correct there. okay okay and uh, so the application what you have there so uh, is it as uh, people keep using module module word right so the module is it like in line with the application or uh, is module a, a overarching concept above the application Okay, can there be interchangeably used? You can you can use you can use in the same uh, way also. But this is uh, there is a slight difference I can say. Module when I'm saying HRMS module, right? So in HRMS module, because that is that is not a proper uh, uh, technical term we can say in a application. So this is kind of we are saying okay, uh, you want training in HRMS module, okay? So in HRMS module we have a payroll which is an application. We have a human resource management system which is the application we have OTL Oracle time and labor which is the application but as a module we are saying okay HRMS is a module if you go with a specific this is a code HR which is related to human resource management system payroll with a payroll uh, application OTL with the OTL application I recruitment with the I recruitment application so then we have for all the sub modules we have a proper application so it's better uh, to go with the if we talk about technical thing, so we it's better to go with the application name, uh, not with a module because it will lead to the uh, uh, like confusion. Right, right, will right. get confused. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second security we have is a data group security. So data group security is a kind of it is a linking between your form and your database. 
if you want a particular application to be access only so what you can do is you can while creating it you can create your custom uh, data group and give access to particular top only when we are seeing the top it is application directory structure which is created into the database so let's say uh, you are creating a custom responsibility and you want only custom uh, data uh, custom uh, application to be accessed or custom application data to be accessed so what we are going to do is we are going to create a data group uh, a new data group which is a custom one and attach a particular application to that particular data group to get the access of that application only oracle provide a standard as a data group a standard data group having all the all the access of all the uh, like access of all the application so if you check a standard data group you will see all the application is attached to the data group we will discuss this uh, data group how we are creating a data group and all these things we will discuss uh, later but for the time being data group standard which is provided by oracle that is having all the application access so when I'm giving a standard here and in most of the responsibility you can see I'm pressing a control F11 so you can see a standard is getting used in a, here you can see they are not using custom one right. uh -huh. till the time it's not very much specific then only they are using and most of the company not using a data group that kind of security but any specific requirement or any business needs so you should have an idea of how data group can be used in the application okay okay and uh, this request group this request group is uh, when you are using this particular responsibility what all concurrent, concurrent request you can run from the application so when I'm saying concurrent request uh, what all the programs let's say uh, you have a payslip you have form 16 you have general ledger reports all these things so till the time those reports are not part of the request group which is assigned to the particular responsibility system you are not able to see those particular program into the application or into the responsibility so you need to switch to that particular responsibility on on the request set which is uh, those program is attached to so this request group is again uh, uh, how we are creating a request group how we are creating a menu how we are creating a data group that is again uh, we can discuss uh, in our detail but for for now yeah. your for for your understanding we have three things which needs to be segregated like uh, you need to understand uh, differently why we are using menu menu is using when we are displaying something in the application to the user and giving access if if the if certain things are not getting displayed to the user system uh, user cannot click on that particular thing right so right. this is how we are managing through menu data group that is not visible to the user never uh, because this is something happening in a database but in a system security point of view what we did is we just give access to the particular database only so user will not never understand or never get to know okay what data group is there or what uh, uh, application access I am having but they will they will feel like I am not able to access the particular record I am not able to access particular record so there is some security behind that but they are not able to uh, understand that request group request group is whatever concurrent program we have in the application do we have access on the particular responsibility if I am uh, Nathan as a user I am having uh, HRMS or finance as a responsibility uh, GES finance responsibility I'm using and uh, I don't have a payslip uh, report access in that particular responsibility even then I'm using that responsibility I cannot access that uh, that particular payslip and you have you are having a different responsibility access and in the res request set which is attached to your responsibility that program is attached to it so you can see that payslip responsibility uh, payslip program also so that is a basic difference uh, behind these uh, data group menu and request group okay okay so I think uh, uh, discussing these things uh, in detail will take time so I think we can yeah. we can take in a, a, a other uh, session okay sure yeah yeah that's fine 
So I think uh, today's uh, session, uh, Raj, uh, it's uh, it's a more uh, descriptive, or uh, you will you will understand something, right? Uh, this is more into the application. So now we will uh, uh, get deep into that, like as as you were uh, saying, F and D user, how we can use those in a backend. So if you have access, so I will create uh, the API and all those things, so that uh, tomorrow session we can we can uh, apply those things and. Uh, Check like how it works in the application. Is yeah, okay? yeah. So, yeah. So I want to. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll actually get my dev password reset tomorrow uh, for for our tomorrow session, and then we can. Uh, because ultimately, I want to kind of get into uh, details on. Uh, uh, because I always try to draw the entity diagrams myself uh, with help of ETRM documentation, uh, but. Uh, uh, it was too much, so I wanted to kind of do. Uh, so for each module or for each application, uh, I wanted to have uh, my own small ER diagrams so that uh, I have that handy. Uh, so that's the direction I want to go towards. So yes, yeah, so I'll get it reset tomorrow, and then we can get into the details of uh, the FND tables. Uh, okay. So do uh, I hope you have a backend uh, access also where we can write a query or. Yes, yes, yes. I do have access to backend. Yes. Okay, so this way, this way it will work, right? It is a bit slow, but I think we can manage uh, with this. No, no. Yeah, this is fine. So uh, I mean, I have backend access also, so we can kind of uh, uh, go there and then uh, kind of. Learn yeah. So if we if we have if we have everything API and all those codes written, so I can explain uh, while while we are working or uh, we are running the. Uh, in the application, but uh, to write in the at the same time in the in the session, so that is uh, again a time taking. So it's yeah, better no, we can. No, I, I know I don't expect the API to be written. The, the reason I asked for that uh, password ch changing is because uh, I thought we could do more freely uh, without worrying in dev than UAT. So that's why I was kind of asking. It. Otherwise, yeah, I mean I don't uh, I don't want to kind of do coding and all that uh, in these sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Raj. So I think uh, uh, we are done for uh, today's session. So we can we can meet tomorrow. Yeah. Sure, uh, Nathan. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Raj. Yeah. Bye. Bye.